Oh, it's it lavender. It tastes like but hand then all soap the customers love it. I'm like, oh, what the it's heck? Awful. So my guys, when when my guys were still working here, they know how much I hate that beer. So they <laughs> they printed out the recipe and hid it in one of the picture frames. I still haven't found it yet. But it's they somewhere in this in this building. There's a <laughs> hidden yeah. There's a hidden recipe, yeah, so that true. they were afraid that I was going to delete the recipe from the computer. So they printed <laughs> it out and hid it somewhere. Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Muddled Dice. Today we're going to delve into a topic that has been sorely missing from the show: craft beer. My name is Daniel. My co-host today is Dustin. Hello, everyone. And our guests today are the owners of Manassas, Virginia's Bad Wolf Brewing, Sarah and Jeremy Myers. Hello. Hello. How's everyone doing today? Really awesome. Doing yeah, well. Good. Good. We got some beer, so let's talk about beer and small business. It's always a good day with beer. That's so right. um, <laughs> let's start out with the beers we're drinking. So I'm drinking a uh, lim- was the lemon drop lemon drop smash. Mm-hmm. So how'd you like come up with that recipe? I had a boatload of lemon drop hops left over from the big brewery, and so I decided I had to use them somehow. What better way to use uh, nice. some fancy, you know, uh, aromatic hops than put them in a smash, right? It's not technically a smash, I guess, though, because I have bittering hops in there besides the lemon drop. But, oh, okay. But so, it's close. So for people who don't know, a smash is single malt and single hops. Yes. So. Yep. Cool. And then what's, Dustin, what are you drinking? I'm drinking Adrian's Strawberry Beet Sour, which is a dangerously drinkable beer. <laughs> um, luckily, yeah. the percentage isn't too high on that, so right. we should be all right. And what are you guys drinking? So I have the Citro Saison. Uh, this is one of our popular ones, isn't it? Yeah, it's, it's one that we've brewed many, many times in the past. Mm-hmm. A basic Saison, a slightly darker Saison, well, hitting up a, you know, around that 7.5 seven seven range, and mm-hmm. then... Um, Hopped with a lot of citra, which is a really nice aromatic citrusy hop. Cool. Very good stuff. And I've got my uh, my brand new, I actually just put this out on Friday, uh, the cardamom grisette. So it's a light, low alcohol, um, all Pilsner malt with um, uh, neutral hops, but then I put a bunch of cardamom pods in there. So it's got okay. this really nice spicy flavor to it. Not spicy like hot, but like... Um, I don't know how to explain it. You just have to try it. It's really, it's really tasty. It. Yeah, yeah, it's really tasty. Cool. All right, so let's um, let's go back to the beginning. How did you guys start, like, with home brewing, and then kind of take that hobby from like I'm brewing in my basement to like or a brick and mortar microbrew? So uh, I went to Germany. I was in a German class um, in uh, high school, which was not the smartest thing to do for me. I mean, you know, in this area, German's not the greatest language. It's not that useful. But um, I went to Germany two years in a row with my German class just on a, on a class trip. And when I was 17, I was there and I was able to drink beer. I wasn't really a beer drinker at home. Uh, one, I was 17, and two, the only beer that my friends got a hold of was you know Miller and Bud. So. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but then um, when I had beer over there in all these different towns, I, I actually acquired quite a taste for beer. Not not just German beer, but but that beer kind of turned me on to the idea that beer didn't didn't have to taste bad. Right. So <laughs> when I got home after the second time I went, um, I was tooling through the mall looking for uh, looking for Christmas presents for people. And I happened upon a Mr. Beer Kit in one of the stores, and I, it just kind of like light bulb went off. I was like, oh, I can make beer at home. Oh, right. great. So I, I bought it, and I started making beer at home when my parents were out of town for the weekends. <laughs> and I fermented in my closet, and then I bottled it in, in uh, plastic two liter bottles. And then, you know, the second, I think it was the second or the third batch, I, I came and I told my mom, and I said, Mom, you know, I, I have something I have to tell you about. I, I'm, I'm really proud of this. I'm, I'm making beer. It's in my closet. She was she was a little pissed at first. You can see her face kind of change, and then she goes, "Well, you have to let me try it." So I brought it down, and she tried it, and it was uh, really bad. But you know, not not like not like throwaway bad, right. but didn't taste all that great. Um, but she kind of she was like, "All right, cool. Well, you know, this is this is interesting. It's a kind of a craft." So she started taking me to the homebrew store, and I got a real uh, homebrewing kit, and I started doing it. Not strictly legit but legit as far as my parents are concerned right. so um and it just kind of snowballed from there I, I did a bunch of extract batches for years and years and years and then um sarah and i met and she had a class at mason it was an entrepreneurship class 
and we she she said you know why don't we just do a, a like a brew pub as because you had to put together a, a business plan mm -hmm. so she said she said let's do a brew pub and i was like yeah great you bring your team and we'll brew a beer and we brewed a beer and it was awesome and then uh, a couple of years later, we found out the law was changing in Virginia, and so uh, I called her from my previous job and said, "Hey, the law's changing. We got to open a brewery." And then the next thing I knew, she had us incorporated, had a website, and all this Oops. stuff set up. But she, <laughs> she, yeah, she was. You just tell honest. me an idea, and I'm like, "Let's do it." Yeah, get the hell out of the way. I, I may not even so, think. <laughs> so yeah, I mean that that's that's where it went from. Uh, what June of 12 was when we incorporated yep. to June of 13 was when mm -hmm. we opened, um, and it was a ridiculous opening day. Yeah, yeah, I, so, yeah, I remember that we were both there, and it was, yeah, like SRO definitely. Oh yeah, thing. yeah. It, it was it was nuts, and we were, we had to like try to get people in, get them a beer, and then shoo them out because yeah. we didn't have any room, yeah, and we had so a line small. going all the yeah. way down to the end of the plaza. It was wild. And so. we started allocating beer at one point. We did. We um, <laughs> early on, so I was only brewing uh, uh, one or two days a week, and mm -hmm. so early on we started allocating um, six or twelve kegs per day. And when those six kegs, I think it was probably six kegs, mm -hmm. when those six kegs were empty, I closed it down. And I was like, all right, later, everybody come back tomorrow. Right. Um, that way we could just be open every day rather than, you know, go through all okay. of our beer in one day and then not be open for a week and a half. Right. And um, we had one day where we opened at 4 o'clock and we closed at 445. It that was, was the shortest nuts. day ever. It was crazy, yeah. We closed at 4.45 and put a sign on the door that said, sorry, everybody, out of beer. We'll be back tomorrow. <laughs> wow. So, yeah, it was pretty Stay wild. Tuned. It was yeah. pretty wild. And mind you, this was on a one-barrel system. So at yeah. the time... And we were also the only game yeah. in town at the time. Yeah. So, I mean, okay. obviously that's not the case anymore. But um, it's, yeah, it, it was it was crazy. Fun times. So one barrel is how many gallons? 31 gallons. 31 gallons. Um, okay. we, we push it a little bit. So it's a one barrel system. It's supposed oh. to be a one barrel system, but I push it to about 40 gallons so I can get a couple more kegs out of it. So okay. I've been doing that for, well, five years now because mm -hmm. we just, you know, six kegs is not enough of a batch. It originally. Goes right way fast. Yeah, originally all this was going to be our <coughs> retirement plan. We were going to wait, travel to Maine and retire in Maine and then open up a brewery just for fun in the garage. Who knows? It might still happen. Might still happen. <laughs> so. I have to ask, you mentioned uh, fermenting in plastic two-liter bottles. Do you have any well, epic explosions? Uh, no, no. I was wondering about <laughs> yeah. if that's how mom found out about it. No, no, I, I told her. I, I did actually have one beer explode. Um, years and years later, a friend of mine got a Mr. Beer Kit for Christmas. This is Mike. And, uh, and he didn't. He wasn't really interested in brewing it. So I was like, well, I'll brew it for you, and I'll, I'll, um, I'll, I'll bring you all the beer. And... This was an old kit. He'd had it for three or four years or something like that. So I used the stuff that was in the kit. Um, I did it just like Mr. Beer. You're supposed to do Mr. Beer. Um, and it fermented down the way that it typically would. And then I primed it and I bottled it in glass, unfortunately. <laughs> and we had it sitting by the front door because I was going to bring it to Mike the next day. Or This was... Uh, this is probably a week and a half after I bottled it, but um, we had it sitting next to the front door. And this is in the winter, and the heat kicked on and at like 2 o'clock in the morning. And I heard, <laughs> boom, boom. And I like I leapt out of bed, and I'm like, oh, my God, somebody's in the house. I'm like, so we, yeah, it was terrible. We slept in the basement at this house, so um, I ran up the stairs, and there's glass and beer all over oh. the living room. And I was like, oh, no. So... Yeah, that's the only time I've ever had a beer uh, explode on me. Uh, we had some, we had some issues with cans at Big Bad Wolf, um, but nothing dangerous, luckily. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I think every home brewer has had that like exploding beer. What's happening? Mm -hmm. Whoops! I left moment. it. Yeah. Yeah. Hot, hot concrete or near the radiator. Yeah, yeah. yeah. At, at the very least, gushers. You know, you open yeah. a bottle and it just the whole thing I've comes had, out as foam, right? Yeah. It hits the <clears> ceiling. So. I had one where I was, um, I opened a bottle of homebrew. And like popped the cap and it, you know, it gushed out. But I was holding it like this, and the mm -hmm. bottle just like launched into my chest. Like, oh, wow! Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that was, yeah. Like, yeah. I think everyone has stories like that if you've yeah, been home brewing long enough. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Um, all right. Well, so you mentioned incorporating and getting all the small business and stuff. Um, do you have any unexpected hurdles and/or pleasant surprises? I think um, <laughs> during the construction process, we. We uh, underestimated the, um, I guess, the uh, how to acquire contractors. And yeah. um, my husband has the best intuition. Well, I don't from know now about on, the best, but I have well, intuition. You so. do. Um, from now on, I will defer to him on selecting people when it comes to the business for, for 
working we, on things. So. We found a contractor <laughs> to do our um, our uh, steam vent because we needed a steam vent for all the boiling that goes yeah. on in here. And uh, we found a guy. Um, Sarah found a guy. <laughs> and, um, on Craigslist. And when we <laughs> but so so <laughs> when, when we sat with the guy, um, I I thought he sounded a little bit fishy. And so I brought it up to Sarah and I and said, you know, the other different. employee. So. Yeah, and my my original employee was mm -hmm. there with the, at the meeting as well. And Sarah and him both assured me, no, this guy, you know, he's, he's legit. He he's legit. He, he went to he Virginia Tech and about. everything. He's, uh, you know, he, he's he's a legit dude. So I was like, all right, whatever. I don't um, even think Angie's list had been created at that point. So maybe not. We didn't I don't think know. to really do a lot of research. I was too trusting. We were too trusting. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But um. But yeah, he he took a three thousand dollar deposit and did zero work and split. So mm -hmm. yeah, that set us back That's a little right. bit. Um, so didn't he come back for incidentals? <laughs> he tried to a couple times. Yeah. <laughs> and then we're like, go away. Oh my God. So, well, we ended up getting him in jail ballsy. at one point. We did. We right? ended up finding him. We um, put him in jail. And he went <laughs> to he went to jail for eighteen months on a felony obtained money under false pretense or something. But he wow. had many other days, charges, so. like a long laundry yeah, list of dude charges. Yeah, he was like a career criminal. So. And um, his his ex wife tipped him off or tipped uh, the police off, right? Yeah, she knew where he was staying with a friend of his or something in a trailer park in Fairfax. So. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> they went and nabbed him and brought him down here, and then and then in, in, in court, oh, yeah. his uh, lawyer comes to us and says, "Hey, he, he'll give you the money back right now if you guys drop the charges." And, and I was, like, like, I said, no. "No, no, absolutely not. <laughs> the, the money's the, gone already. Yeah, we right, don't care yeah, about the right. money now. We want to see his ass Go, in jail. Stay in so. jail, dude." <laughs> right. Yeah. So that was one hurdle. Yeah. And then I guess uh, you could say the other hurdle was the beer hurdle, where we didn't have enough beer for a while. Yeah, and the labels too. We yeah. and this was this was due to our own. Um, uh, lack of due diligence, I think, more than anything else. We didn't realize that even if you're not distributing beer in Virginia, you still have to have label approval. And so there wow. was a big issue when, when I went to pay taxes for the first time and I didn't have any labels approved. And um, and I, it, you know, ABC says, well, you're, you have to have a, you know, a, li a label approval for the beer that you're paying taxes on. And I said, well, I'm not distributing anything. It's all just served in house. It's all over the counter sales. And they said, well, you still have to have labels approved. And I just couldn't understand that for some reason. <laughs> I remember hearing yeah. about that. Yeah. I wasn't I, sure what the specifics yeah. of it were. Yeah. But I remember that, that within the first year ish, mm -hmm. there was some yeah. big hang up about they're getting tripped up on having labels for only serving over the counter. Mm -hmm. And I yep. never knew what the specifics of that were. It was, it was crazy. I, I, I think I went a little off. We both went a little off the deep end on that one. We got a little upset. We and, had to close, and really, I think, for a little bit, a bit temporarily. We had, it was just for a few it. days. Yeah, but um, still. ABC was actually really good about it. Like We, we worked it out with them. Um, we sent in some um, approvals or some labels for approval, and they approved them almost instantaneously because they knew, you know, they were like, you, you guys are trying. You, we're not, they knew we weren't trying to, like, screw anybody over. So, right. so they basically just, just gave us uh, 10 labels right away. Uh, obviously, we had to pay for them, and you have to pay for your labels. But um, but they did it very very quickly, and, and we were able to open up and, and use those labels. So so can you explain a little more about what the labeling system is? And for people who don't know who are listening, ABC is Alcoholic Beverage Control. Yes, mm -hmm. which basically oversees all alcohol distribution in Virginia and a few other states. Mm -hmm. Cause I know there's well, like California doesn't have that. It's yeah, crazy, so there's but. there's uh, ABC is is different. It's separate for each state, right? So yeah. we have the Virginia ABC, the Alcoholic Beverage Control Board. And um, they, for, for any beer that's going to be produced or distributed or sold in Virginia, you have to have a label approval. And it's not, a, it's not, where it gets kind of ridiculous is that it's not like a recipe approval and it's not, it's not, you know, they're not making sure that you're using safe ingredients or anything like that. Not that I think anybody in, in Virginia is brewing with unsafe ingredients. Right. That's just not a thing that you do. But um, it's, it's, it's more or less just, you pay them a little bit of money, and you say, "This is beer," and they're like, "Okay." <laughs> and then you you have to right. on the yeah exactly I agree. <laughs> and then on the on the container that the beer is in, you have to have a label that says, you know, Bad Wolf Brewing Company, Manassas, Virginia. This okay. is beer. <clears throat> That's it. Um, it's slightly ridiculous, but it's but it's not uh, inhibiting as far as the amount of beers that you want to try to make in a year. No, no, it's not. Because, um, I mean, I can apply for labels. And again, like I said, ABC, even even without the, the extenuating circumstances that brought all this about, they're really good about getting approvals done very quickly. I think I've had approvals. The, the, the longest I've had an approval sit with ABC was probably 15 days. Oh, wow. So, yeah, they're really That's quick. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <clears throat> It's not bad. 
Um, and it, you can have, I have several labels that are um, what are called experimental um, beer styles. Okay. So I kind of use those as uh, catch-all labels for stuff that I'm trying out that I don't necessarily want to buy another label for. And then oh, when okay. something comes along that's really good and I want to package it, maybe I do still do some bottling in here, then I'll, I'll get a, a purpose-made uh, purpose label for that beer. So, that But sense. until then, I just use the experimentals, and it works out pretty well. Cool. Uh, okay, well, that's a nice seg into recipes. How do you... How do you start a recipe? Like, you just like, oh, I want to use this hop and let's put something together or I want to invoke this flavor. You're absolutely right. Both? <laughs> <laughs> That's um, yes, to all the above. So I, uh, the cardamom grisette that I'm drinking right here um, just came from, um, I was, uh, well, actually it originated as a soda that Sarah had, and this was probably a year ago. She mm -hmm. bought a fancy soda at some, um, you know, gourmet organic mart and it was a cardamom grapefruit soda and I took oh, yeah. a sip of it and I was like oh my god that's a beer so I did a, I did a cardamom grapefruit sour which was pretty good but the cardamom didn't pop as much as I wanted it to and then I had a bunch of leftover cardamom so the other day I was looking at that and I said well I need something low alcohol on the board because everything up there is you know over <laughs> over five or six percent right, right mm -hmm. now so decided to do a grisette with uh, with a bunch of cardamom in it and it turned out really really good so um, but yeah, recipes are just, inspiration comes from all over the place. When we're walking through the grocery store, mm -hmm. uh, we like to go to the international marts a lot because you get, the, the produce is just better and cheaper and the meats are better and cheaper and, you know, it's just, you get a, a much better selection of stuff. And when we're walking through the international marts, I'm always looking at the produce and the fruits and, and the tea. grain and tea, <laughs> um, spices. I'm always looking at that stuff and I'm like, what could I brew? What could I brew? So just recently I... I did my first beer with rice. Okay. <laughs> oh, I know everybody hates that, but um, but it was 20 pounds of jasmine rice, and I'm hoping to kind of get a little bit of that jasmine character out of it. I don't think I'm gonna get any of that jasmine character, but it's an experiment, so we'll see what happens with that. But um, how, how many recipes do you think we have at, in the, what five years we've been around? We're probably approaching 500 recipes now. Yeah. So. We just wow. literally, it's off the cuff, I think, a lot of times, and just inspired by customers and yep. surroundings. Customers will ask for travel. something. Um, I wrote a recipe today that uh, one of my regulars has been asking for for uh, at least a couple of months now, and he wanted an, an imperial red ale, and I said, cool, I'll do an imperial red ale, and didn't I wrote it up today. I haven't <laughs> haven't brewed it yet, but I'm I'm gonna brew it tomorrow. I think. So. There's some people that actually give us recipes. Yeah, I have um, I, <laughs> I have uh, Stein Club this. members who yeah. bring us who bring me recipes, and they say, "Hey, can can you brew this?" And I, yeah, absolutely. When can you come brew it with me? And um, when I first said that, the guy was like, "What? I'm mean, gonna <laughs> brew it with you?" I was like, "Yeah, come and brew it with me." So he came in, and we brewed a a, a red IPA, which will be coming out. Uh, I don't know, a week or two. Um, nice. So. Yeah, it's That's just cool. yeah. it just comes from all over the place. I mean, when you're when you're not when you're not stressed out and and dying like we were when we had the big place. <laughs> Too many things yeah. happening. The inspiration is just everywhere. Everywhere you look, you're like, oh, there's, that could be a beer. Oh, that could be a beer. And, right. and you know, it's 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 just fun. When you're first trying a recipe, do you guys do like? Do like a one or two gallon tiny batch, or do you mm -mm. just go straight to the thirty gallons? Go for it. I usually go, just go straight to go the forty for gallons. Yeah, it, it's. I've been brewing for a really long time, and I'm not mm. going to say, I, I definitely have misses, and we still have misses, but uh, you get kind of an innate idea of what something's going to taste like or how something's going to come out, um, depending on what grain you put in, depending on what hops you put in, and I kind of leverage that a lot. Now, it doesn't always come out the way I want, and I do second iterations of some beers, but um, everything that you guys are drinking today is, a, is a, an original iteration. The citrus saison is... Significantly different from the earlier citrus saisons, but it's I would still consider it. It's probably a second iteration. I would consider mm -hmm. that, but Versus yeah, revolution. yep. Yeah. Um, and then the uh, lemon drop is the first iteration. The cardamom grisette's a first iteration. Um, the strawberry sour is a, is a first iteration. And number so. three, the emergence. India Black Ale was originally, I think, the one we actually had on tap five years ago. It is, yes. <laughs> yeah. um, but again, but that's it's significantly different from the original recipe. Yeah. So I changed, um, I changed the hop schedule a bit on that one. But I actually think it, it works well for that beer, to be honest. So, so for you guys, what's the, what's the ultimate, the number one, the go back to beer that you guys 
<laughs> love to have on the roster. I, I mean, know. it's got to be difficult with 500. In the... Yeah, I don't think I have a like a like a definite go back to beer. Um, it, it it's a lot of my customers would tell you what theirs is, but um, but I always I always want to try new stuff. So it's hard for me to go back and find the old stuff and and rebrew that because like I have an idea of something new that I want to do. But you know you have to you, you got to do that because the customers want to come in and they want to see the Jesse's girl and they want to see the Claire's vanilla porter and they mm -hmm. want to see Mother Pucker and yeah, yeah. but I can't have I can't have three beers on tap all the time because we only have six beers so I have to just I have to keep rotating stuff through so um, I don't know for me if it was if there was a definite like have to go back to I don't know maybe. Maybe like Oncoming Storm. That's the first one I kind of think of which too. Which is yeah, which is a a big Belgian strong dark. Um, I've actually nice. got it in tank right now. I'm probably going to keg it tomorrow. Um, and I don't do it very often, but it's one that always kind of comes to mind when people say like, "What would you go back to?" Mango so. IPA. <clears throat> yeah, Mango IPA was really good. Everybody likes that one. And there's this one do. beer that I know he hates, <laughs> <laughs> but everybody likes it. It's the. Um, Jezebel. Jezebel, yeah. Which is like got what lavender in it and it's a lavender pale ale. <laughs> it's got <laughs> which it's funny because it to me like I guess when I, <clears throat> excuse me when I was pregnant it actually tasted like hand soap to me because I just it was does, like oh it's it lavender. It tastes like <laughs> but hand soap. But then all the customers love it. I'm like what oh, the it's heck? Awful. <laughs> so my guys when when my guys were still working here they know how much I hate that beer so they <laughs> they printed out the recipe and hid it in one of the picture frames I still haven't found it yet. <laughs> But it's somewhere in this in this building. <laughs> nice. There's a hidden yeah, yeah. There's a hidden recipe, yeah, so that somewhere. they were afraid that I was going to delete the recipe from the computer. So they printed <laughs> it out and hid it somewhere. So yeah, but people ask for that beer. I don't understand why, but people ask for it. So I can't always brew for myself, I guess. So is that, in your opinion, is that the the we're never going back there again <laughs> beer? Like is that the is that the the if you where's choose. your if if it was if it was. Totally up to me. Yeah, absolutely. I'd never go back to that beer, but people want to drink it and you know I, I, We're we're a business that's in business to make money. So obviously right. I have to brew right. stuff for other people sometimes But yeah, yeah. But like, yeah if it were if it was you know if I was the one buying the beer. No, I wouldn't go back to right, that so. right. Oh. so um, Let's talk about names for beers. One of the things I love about craft beer and just beer in general is some of the names are just totally ridiculous and like yeah, like Jesse's girl is not ridiculous, but it's fun and like yeah. targets back to music, and um, uh, Mother Pucker, mm -hmm. Mother that's fun. So, what are your guys' favorite label designs or beer names you've come up with over the years? Um, I, as far as label designs, I, I like I have a lot of label designs that I really like. Um, I like the Mother Pucker design a lot. Yeah. I think that Gabby did a phenomenal job on that label. Um, I like the design for You Will Not Like This mm -hmm. IPA. I had a friend of mine do that, and it was just a very like foreboding, kind of spooky-looking label, which that beer to me was kind of a foreboding, spooky beer, because I'm not <laughs> a big like triple IPA guy, but, okay. but people love that beer. Um, the Cygnus uh, label oh, yeah. um, that a friend, uh, friend, my friend Drew did for us, which was just really simple and really clean and classy, and it was a fantastic beer, perfect label for the beer. Um, yeah, I don't know. There's so many I labels. Like the Freshy Vice and Freshy Vice label because, she loves. Yeah. yeah, I like the uh, I like green. I really like green. And then that little, like <laughs> lime on the front just makes you want, was it a lime or a lemon? It was a lime. Yeah, lime. Yeah, yep. it just makes you want to just have a drink in the summer. Yep. It's pretty. It's pretty colors. <laughs> it was, that was, and it's a good. It was a really tasty beer yeah. too. I don't know if you guys had that beer, but I don't think I remember that one. I don't yeah. recall it. Yeah, we did that over at the big place and, and canned it in pint cans, and it was just really nice, clean, lemon limey sour hmm. beer. It was like it was like alcoholic Sprite almost, okay. right? Like if Mike's Hard Lemonade good. tasted good, <laughs> right? Kind of like yeah. that. Yeah, I can get behind that. Didn't um, it kind of remind you of like the Hardywood? Um, that one that they had the. Uh, Oh, their their um, sure. Berliner Weiss. The Berliner Weiss. That's kind of what. Yeah. Maybe I just don't remember it very well, but I felt that's like it the was... that's the white whale right there. The Hardywood Berliner Weiss. Yeah. That stuff is fantastic. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. And as far as beer names, I think again it goes back to like Mother Pucker. Yeah. Um, and then I'm always coming up with new <laughs> names too. There's nothing really crazy up there right now, but um, I have some stuff coming out. I'm gonna do a uh, a whole series of. 
loosely conspiracy theory inspired <laughs> beers. That's so um, I have the Globe Earth Conspiracy IPA coming pretty soon, and then uh, I'm gonna do a wit, call it Holographic Moon, and um, <laughs> some other things like that. But I mean, it's just. I think we poke fun in a lot of things. Yeah, we do. From urban legend to space. The Bunny Man. Yep. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah, I remember that one. Bunny yeah. Man. Yeah. Apparently, yeah. um, Clifton got a little upset with us. I didn't for realize that. that beer I just we found inspired out recently. a bunch of people to go down to Bunny Man Bridge. Oh. <laughs> whoops. Yeah. Our whoops. bad. So don't do that one again. Right. Or maybe we will. Who knows? So, um, what? Oh, I had a question. I can't remember it. Oh, uh, how do you find the artist to do your labels? I noticed when you were talking about that, you mentioned a few different names. So how do you? Yeah, um, well, Gabby did the bulk of our labels, okay. and she was uh, she was our employee. She was our uh, kind of social media manager and art manager and, and um, marketing director, sort of, at, for a time, and um, a really talented artist. And so she put together the bulk of our labels. The Strabe label, which is another really really cool label, was um, was done in a label contest and it was a guy named Christopher Moore who uh, I, th I think he's a local guy right yeah and I think he's actually doing some art for some of the other breweries around here I guess. good deal I'm, I'm glad to hear it but yeah he, he won that label contest and it was just a fantastic um, actually you can see that that's a really great right. right. way oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah so he's um he did that one for us and then um, yeah. my friend Drew just wanted to do a label for us so that's why he designed the Cygnus label and then I have a friend who went to um, Savannah College of Art and Design so he's you know, Garrett. trained artist, and um, I, I coerced him into doing the, the <laughs> you will not, you will not nice. like this IPA label for us, so I still have some of this, so I'll probably bottle mm -hmm. that period. And then you've actually had uh, some businesses we've worked with, we've had them actually design a label for yep. us. So the Freshy Vice yeah. label came from Freshy Sites in um, Manassas, okay. that was a collab we did with them, they did the label, we did the beer. And then the Sage Wisdom label came from um, Imagine, Imagine. Uh, or formerly Imagine Design, but mm -hmm. now just Imagine, I guess. Um, and that was a Sage, um, Sage infused wit, which was really, really tasty. I mean, we're probably going to do a beer yeah, like that actually... again with uh, with Imagine pretty soon here. So there will be another cool. interesting mm -hmm. label coming out of their studio. So yeah, it's just kind of um, wherever we, wherever we can find it, wherever we can find the labels. Somebody that wants to do um, some artistic something for us, somebody that wants to get their name out there, or one of our employees for, for the most part. Mm -hmm. So if yeah. they're feeling creative, <laughs> I have no artistic talent besides yeah, right. beers. So you can do some I don't stuff. do I don't do try to mess with the labels at all. But. You've done some <laughs> stuff at home. Mop takes ups. me <laughs> takes me months. <laughs> Yeah, private collection of Jeremy's labels. Yeah. yeah, it's like there's like two of them, and it's like a year's worth of work. <laughs> there was also like some it's of the interesting part. ones, like the um, the ones where we had like the stamps on them. Remember the or Origin series? Or yeah, what? we did a we did kind of a catch-all label at one point um, when we were doing an Origin series of beers, which was kind of going back to some of our earlier beers, and oh, that okay. was um, just sort of a blank label with some light design on it and we were using hand stamps to put the names of the beer on there. Oh, that's cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was all right. It was um, it was actually a hell of a lot more work than we had bargained for, so. I can imagine, it's stamped each individual mm -hmm. bottle by hand. Yeah, yeah. And, and you're talking, for the most part, you have to stamp each individual letter by hand, too, on each. Oh, uh, oh that's on pretty cool. Mm -hmm. course, yeah. Yeah, it took way longer than we expected. <laughs> it probably would have made more sense to just figure out how to run them through the yeah. printer, but. So I had such a good idea in the beginning. <laughs> yeah, it did. It did. Yeah. <laughs> nope, never mind. Right. Uh, so, <clears throat> you guys don't have to, an have to answer this if you don't want to, but when you're coming up with beer names, are there any that have been like, this is so cool, but we just can't use it, or like it's too mm. ridiculous? Or yeah. You like, yeah, we have a lot of. Yeah, we've had quite a few that were. Controversial. Quite a few that were like, um, they sounded great, and then when we kind of stepped step back and thought about it, we were like, no. <laughs> right. um, we, we had a. <laughs> we had a. <laughs> we had a, uh, a most recently um, a um, Concord grape sour beer that we did. Okay. And. Um, we had all kinds of names that we went through. It was like the Grape Ape and the, the, the Grapist was the one that we decided not to use. So that's probably smart. Yeah, yeah. It was. It didn't work out. So we ended up calling it the Grape Scenario, which which uh, works out. But um, the other yeah, the Grapist was not was not one yeah. that we wanted to really. I mean, it, we probably would have gotten away with it, but somebody would have been upset by that. And yeah. We don't need that. Yeah. So. You end up in years worth of litigation, like mm -hmm. flying right. dog and. 
Oh yeah, yeah exactly. Still in litigation yeah. at this point. Uh, I, I don't know if they ever. Oh. I, I'm not. I, I mean, I know they're using it now, yeah. but for a time, I know they replaced Raging Bitch with something equally as terrible while they were waiting <laughs> oh, for nice. it to work its way <laughs> yeah. through the courts. Virginia has yeah. um, has rules about uh, offensive names and offensive images on their okay. on your packaging. Mm-hmm. And somehow Flying Dog gets away with both of them. Every time. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I still it, pick up that beer when I am raging, though. I it's, have. It's good beer. It's a good beer, but it's, yeah. I mean, you, you, the image is just like, <laughs> it's ridiculous. really? Yeah. I love Ralph Steadman, but man, that image is just <laughs> crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, well. You have a question about sours? Dust? Yeah. So uh, I saw you guys are uh, into sours quite a bit lately, and mm-hmm. on your blog, you guys were talking about getting pretty heavy into sours, especially after you were closing down the, the larger place. You said you were mm-hmm. going to refocus on that. Um, from what I know, sours can be more difficult depending on the approach that you take to to introduce wild yeast and all that. Is there they, they can some be. lesson learned? There um, that... Yeah, there's a there's a lot of lessons learned along the way. We've dumped out a lot of beer um, figuring out sours, but um, but the, for the most part, what what we serve in here. Most of the time is just a kettle soured beer, which is pretty easy. You, you do a little boil, you add some lactobacillus and let it kind of sour over yep. a few days, and then you come back and you boil it up again, kill off all the lacto and add your hops, and um, and then just do it like you would a normal beer. Um, those the the strawberry beet sour is a, is a lacto kettle soured beer. It's really simple. It's a clean sour, and then you add some fruit to it, and it just kind of pops and makes it really nice, right? Um, I also have a Solera program going where I have four uh, 53 gallon barrels that are full of a base beer and they all have different organisms in them. So I have um, Brettanomyces, uh, different strains of Brettanomyces in each of the barrels. And then I also have Lactobacillus and Pediococcus in those barrels. So that's going to create over a really long time. We're talking on the scale of, of you know, possibly years, six months to a year is minimum. You know, two years is probably. That was the other thing I run about them <laughs> that sometimes they can take an exorbitant amount of time. They can aged sours, Brettanomyces sours, Pediococcus, Lactobacillus at room temperature can take a very long time. The Belgians have a saying because uh, when you use Pediococcus in a beer, it's not really a saying, but. When you use Pediococcus in a beer, you end up getting what they call stringiness, where it almost looks like mucilaginous, okay. and your, your beer kind of comes out like thick and, <laughs> and <laughs> mucusy. Right? And the Belgians say that if your beer comes out mucusy like that, you're on the right track. Just give it another year. So, <laughs> yeah. So it's uh, it, it's kind of crazy when you get into that kind of stuff. But I do have uh, four barrels going back there. Um, one with uh, sour cherries in them in it, um, and then. Um, I've, I've dosed two of them with um, active live tapache, which is a spontaneously fermented pineapple beverage, mm. uh, which is really tasty. And I'll have a tapache coming out in the next. I always I keep saying in the next couple of weeks. You do I'm, keep saying but, that. But there there will be a tapache coming out it's on so tap and in bottles in the foreseeable future. I'll just put it that way. All right. <laughs> um, but yeah, it, it's. With the with the Solera beers, it's a matter of tasting them often. So I get in there and I taste all the Soleras probably once every couple of weeks. Um, and then when one seems like it's ready, you pull off about a third of it or two-thirds of it. Um, and that either gets blended with something else or packaged uh, straight. Uh, and then you refill that barrel immediately. You don't ever want headspace in the barrels because okay. that allows uh, other organisms to get into the wood and you can spoil the beer. And obviously we want to spoil it but it's kind of a controlled spoil. Right. So um, it's a huge learning process. Uh, my Solera barrels are not where I want them yet, although I have put out one beer, um, the SP1 Ray that was out. My barrels have names, so you'll see the different names come out. There'll be an SP, which is a Solera project, and then the number is how, which which one we're on. Okay. So we're on, we've done one, so the next one that will come out will be two, and then there will be a name, which will be the name of the barrel that will come after that. Um, I'm not going to tell you the names of the barrels. You'll, <laughs> you guys will just have to keep coming <laughs> in and watching. Like you're guarding the names yeah. of those yeah. barrels. Yeah, you'll just have to keep coming in and watching. What for about them, I'm so. Leaving You for Brett? That one, is that a Brettanomyces? It was, yeah. And so actually the I'm Leaving You for Brett came out of one of the original Solera barrels. That was, oh. that was a beer that I did in one of my Solera barrels before I started the Solera project. And that was um, um, a base uh, gold nail that we fermented with a Saison yeast and then we put it into a gin barrel and aged it for about four months in a gin barrel with Brettanomyces. 
and then we um, bottled that, and it's actually been in bottles for a year. We saved and some. We, we have yeah. 12 cases that yeah. we're releasing next month. They're, they're a, a year old, a year aging in bottles, and that stuff wow. is and they're crisp. shaping and they're up refreshing. amazingly. It's, so good. it's a little bit funky. It's really, really crisp and clean. It is like a perfect hot weather summer mm -hmm. beer. Perfect nice. for August. We nice. got to get that out. Yep. Uh, it's, mm -hmm. it's so fantastic. Nice, nice beer. So when you, you said you you take off about a third of a barrel and then you mm -hmm. refill it immediately, mm -hmm. you just make more wort and then refill it with the new wort or? Yes, uh, well, well, beer, I actually do uh, fermentation before it goes into the barrels. I don't want to do oh, okay. fermentation in the barrels because I don't want to produce too much um, Saccharomyces sludge at the sure. bottom of the barrel. So, so you do like a primary fermentation and yep. then add the uh, bread or whatever and then age that? Yeah, and the idea is that um, I don't have to actually add any more organisms to the barrels because okay. the barrels are already inoculated with these organisms. So all I need to do is pull some of the wort out to blend or package and then add, I say wort, pull some of the beer out to blend right. or package and then add new beer, fresh beer, um, to the barrel and then the organisms will come back out of the wood and they'll start doing their okay. work on the remaining sugars in, those, in the, uh, that beer. So Saccharomyces has a, a particular kind of uh, spectrum that it can ferment, a spectrum of sugars that it can ferment. And then uh, Brettanomyces, Pediococcus, and Lactobacillus go way outside of that spectrum. Um, but all three of those it's organisms real, take a really long out. time. Yeah, <laughs> so um, yeah, all three of those organisms take a really long time to do their work. So it takes, uh, again, years, six months, a year, two years. Um, the longer you give it, the better. Right. So. Um, you had another question? Move on to yours. <laughs> oh yeah, so <clears throat> you guys said what you've, you've recently entered your third era, which is uh, <laughs> post the larger um, brewery closing down or the larger mm -hmm. establishment closing down. So was that, um, I heard that there was quite a bit, uh, the motivation for that was that you guys had your second child is yes. that correct there's a lot of yeah them. and i can empathize there i have quite a few of them at home too so nice. i was uh was was that a a decision that things were just getting too crazy for you guys or it was you know like you guys were spread too thin now that you had you know like not enough family time or what, what were the main motivations for you guys deciding to to come back to your third era and consolidate a little bit well it was i'm um, primarily our family and we had some of the I guess like everything kind of came together at that time and when you're overwhelmed with so much happening you can't really see the forest from the trees and um, once the baby was born we're just like you're not getting any sleep anyway so we're pretty much delirious still not getting any sleep <laughs> we're still not <laughs> yeah, getting yeah. any sleep this guy's crazy well, we love him but he's definitely not like the first um, so we had um, the baby to contend with we we're trying to juggle our two locations we have our health things going on in the background. We had the market conditions changing. Um, the fall was right around the time where a couple of breweries in the area opened. Yeah. And yeah. so it just, I guess it all kind of came together at that, that point where we're like, oh my God, we really have to make a decision. We can't just keep living like this. This mm -hmm. is not gonna be good for the long run. So um, it was a really tough decision, but yeah, we were up against a wall at that yeah. point, and so we just, uh, you know, like Sarah said, the family issues, health issues, market conditions, um, not making, not making money, not making enough money, not really making any money over there. Um, we'd been kind of floating at break even for quite a while, mm -hmm. so it just got to the point where we said we had to throw in the towel and say, mm -hmm. you know, we got to go back to what was good before and and what worked. Back to our roots, which is where we were successful. And then at that point, we can start a new journey. We can figure out, oh, well, now we're going, we're going to, we won't forget the past, but we'll just learn from what happened, right? Yeah. And then we're going to step forward and create something new and something that no one else around this area has that, like, that's what makes us so special, right? Yeah, and I think this little tiny place is, <laughs> um, is pretty damn close to that. I mean, no, nobody, like nobody has a tiny little spot like this. I mean, obviously, you've mm -hmm. got... You've got a couple places in Old Town now that, that are brewing on a smaller scale, but... I we are the smallest and oldest. We're the smallest and oldest. Tiniest Manassas. little brewery. <laughs> and the most the original brewery of Prince William County and Manassas yeah. Um, yeah. In, in the history of this area. As far as we know. As far as we know. 
Yeah, it's pretty nice yeah. claim to fame. Yeah, kind of cool. Kinda cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, those those moments can be difficult yeah. when when you feel like your back's against the wall. But um, hopefully, for you guys, yeah. you feel like you made the right decision now oh, in hindsight. Yeah. And things oh, are, yeah. You know, the pressure's <laughs> off, and you can yeah. you know, now you can see the forest and, a little bit. And I Absolutely. think our customers yeah. are actually getting like you can tell the customers are like, wow, this is like they they they're receiving the feedback from. Like a person who's positive and happy again. Like Jeremy was just this miserable, all this time. miserable man. I mean, no, I love him, but tired holy crap, and tired and yeah, and miserable. <laughs> you couldn't and, get out of bed practically. Uh, like we were didn't want to talk to anybody. Yeah, because yeah. you know, because I mean, when there. there's nothing good to say, you don't really want to talk to anybody. Right. Yeah. Sure. It's really hard um, to just keep your head above water when you feel like you're sinking, you know. And and now, um, so I serve in here on Wednesdays and Thursdays typically, unless something happens, but. Um, I serve in here Wednesdays and Thursdays, and I get that direct feedback from people about the beer that I brewed two weeks ago, and it's nice. it's really uh, rewarding and and much less stress. Mm -hmm. um, you know, doing going small scale is 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 the best way to really. I, I can't say the best, but it seems like the best way to start and then slowly grow. Or, you know, in our case, we had just jumped so fast, so quickly. Yeah. And, um, yeah, it takes time and experience to get to those points, I think. So we're, we couldn't be happier. This was like, I'd say, the best decision. Yeah, now, yeah. now, we're in, in the third era. <laughs> right. Right. And yeah. we're still yeah. married, yeah. isn't that great? Yeah. Like, yeah. there's other people who have gone through stuff like this and we've heard horror stories where they're not even together anymore. And I'm like, man, our, our family's still together. And that was another part of it. We were at each other's yeah, throats a lot. Yeah, it was every day, right. every day. Yeah. It was just this and that and. Well, because it's so hard to compartmentalize you when, you know, <laughs> when you're talking about not getting any sleep. And yeah. Each one of you may see that as the other one's fault because yeah. I was up all night with the baby or yes. you were up there while you were sleeping or whatever and, and then you're yeah. sharing all the business responsibilities. Yeah. I mean, it, it, yeah. it can be hard to put yeah. one head on and not let it affect and the other. And you don't have enough hands. No matter how many people you hire, you're right. like, I still don't have enough hands to be in two places at once because like, there's always something going on between right. the those locations. Yeah. So. Running a business with a spouse is a, is a, a chore in itself. I mean, it's a you, challenge. When you, you're, you're at work all day and you're talking about these things and then when you go home, like you said, you can't compartmentalize and yeah. so it's, it's right back to work when we get home. As soon as the kids go to bed, it's right back to work. You yeah. Know? yeah. It just there's no downtime. Right. So and you try so hard not to let the, mm -hmm. the work life bleed in with oh, the kids it, that's where all you're it did. distracted all the time, but you constantly have a running dialogue mm -hmm. in the background. Yep. We couldn't yep. go on vacations. We couldn't go even visit other breweries, go have fun time with friends. Like, I mean, it was limiting. So now we've seen ourselves like, oh, we're going to plan this vacation finally. Like, what yeah, are going to do? <laughs> now the only limiting factor is whether or not the baby's going to sleep. There's, right. there's that. Right. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. So where do you, um, if you can, what path do you see Bad Wolf on now? Um, I think right now we can't really see over the horizon. Right okay. now it's, um, it's, it's we're going to keep doing what we're doing here. Um, we're going to keep playing with the sour beers, keep playing with the Solera project, um, keep on coming up with new recipes. Uh, until we exhaust all possible recipes, which <laughs> I don't know if that's ever going to happen. You know, the, the, right, so the heat death of the universe. Yeah, yeah. yeah. sky's the limit. Five million to go. Yeah. So, um, so I, I think um, right now fun, we don't have right? any big plans. Right now, it's just kind of uh, ride the wave that we're on and. Um, Hope that folks still want to come in and have the beer here, which has proven to be yeah. the case over the last couple of months. Well, so. Isn't that fun for us to actually think, oh, we can just go in and have fun today and brew beer and not have to deal with who are we brewing this beer for? Because some distributor has said we have to have you know X number of these kegs. Right. Like, yeah. Now we yeah. can go in and brew whatever. So we're yeah, I think and there's no hurry. I mean, no hurry. There's you know, no you know there's yeah. no trying to meet a deadline because uh, yeah. Jiffy Loops waiting for ten right. barrels of beer right. or something. Right. Right. And it's, it's like you were saying cool. with like the the possible Tekken tournament or yeah. or whatever. You yeah. can start to plan yeah. those extracurricular things that, like that. that. Yeah. Fun stuff. Add a little yeah. life in yeah. like that instead yeah. of just always you know. Trying to work with the logistics of trying to manage two things. Goofy, that are, goofy stuff like that. That's yeah. that you know. I'm not even going to be working that night. I'm just going to come in and play Tekken with right. everybody. That right. Have a couple. Of, I'm sure I'm not going to win, but definitely going to play some Tekken. So. Right. But yeah, I mean, it's um, there's no big plans right now. It's it's just keep doing what we're doing. Have fun. Drink beer. Make beer. That's beer should stuff. be fun. That's yeah. our, it should be. Yeah, our it should old be. Uh, tagline was relax. It's just beer. Relax. It's just yeah. beer. Yeah. yeah. That's I need to bring that, that, that T-shirt um, back. That's a good a variation on model. Asians. Relax. Have another homebrew. Yeah, yeah. more or less. Yeah. Nice. So that's kind yeah, of where nice. I got the idea. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. All right. So um, <laughs> I think it's probably a good place to call it. Uh, before we end the show, do you guys have any events or anything you wanted to promote? Um, 
We have uh, we have a, a candle making class so, coming up. Wix and um, Sips. On, what is that? July, July 25th. 25th. And cool. um, I can't see it on the back of this flyer, but it's coming up <laughs> on July 25th. Um, and it should be around. It's, and it's on our website. Yeah, it's on but, our website. Okay. That's, a, that's kind Isn't of a, that? um, a, a new take on kind of the, the paint and sip thing um, okay. that we're doing with uh, Shining Soul Candles in Old Town here. Mm hmm um, we also have cafe. Sounds risky. Uh, yeah. Alcohol and hot wax. <laughs> <laughs> it's, we'll see. We'll see. Yeah. <laughs> there will be waivers signed, and I'm sure there will be uh, gauze applied at some point. Mm. But you know, we'll see how it goes. Um, and we have our uh, we have our book club that goes on every month, which I would encourage other oh, cool. people to come and, and um, be part of. We set them up in the back, and they. They do their thing back there and have a good time. We can't forget Cafe Pottery. Cafe Pottery. Every fourth Thursday. Yep. Um, so you just get a piece of pottery that he, um, Andrew, who owns Cafe Again, Pottery. Again, another take on yeah, the local. paint and sip. Yep. So um, he brings in um, thrown pots and people sit back there and sip beers and paint the pots with glaze. And then he brings them back and, and fires them and you pick them up at his shop. Mm -hmm. so. Cool. Um, it was uh, great. Yeah. yeah, it was a fun time last time. I think mm -hmm. we had we only had three or four people show up. It was but, the first um, one, and we kind of did it, I guess, at the last minute. Yeah, it was kind of a kind of off the cuff type thing. But right. we're gonna, yeah. we're gonna do you have a date for that more. one? Yeah, we Did do, you? and I don't, I didn't. What'd you say? It's it's, it's coming up at the end of uh, it's the fourth Thursdays. Okay. Uh, every okay. fourth Thursday here. And again, th this stuff will all be on our website. Yep. Yeah. So. Um, Speaking of, yeah. you want to give out your like, you got Facebook, Twitter, website. Sure. Good old www. BadWolfBrewingCompany.com. We have our Twitter at um, BadWolfBrewingC, uh, Instagram BadWolfBrewingC, um, Facebook is uh, the one, <laughs> Facebook.com slash I think BadWolfBrewingC, I believe. Facebook's always a hard one to yeah. remember for some it's, reason, for, for my show too. Yeah. I'm like, I know all of them, but like, wait, what's my Facebook one? Yeah, yeah. and I think that's if I updated the, the thing where it actually <laughs> asks you to do that. Right. <laughs> um, yeah. Cool. Uh, so I think that is, yeah, that's everything. Thank you guys for being on the show. Thanks for having us. <clears throat> Thank you. It's been a lot of fun. Thanks, Justin, for co-hosting. Yeah. So Not a problem. It's great. being on the show, too. Yeah. Great. Um, for listeners, thank you so much for listening. If you enjoyed the show, please consider donating to any of the organizations listed in the description. Uh, and that's it. Thanks, everyone, for listening. Good night.